morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to University United Methodist Church. If you are visiting us today, we just extend a hearty welcome to you. And also for those who may have joined us online, we're glad you joined us today and we hope you'll be blessed. Just a few housekeeping items. First of all, in the pew backs, you'll see a yellow card. This is for prayers, a prayer request that you might have. And if your prayer request is confidential, just mark the card accordingly. And if you have a joy or a prayer that's been answered and you wanna share that with us, we'd like to hear about that too. You can drop this in the offering plate as it's passed around. Also, if you are an online giver and you just want to put something in the offering plate, we have these online giving cards that are also located in the pew backs. We thank you for your faithfulness in giving. And the last thing is there's a black registration pad in each pew. If you would be so kind to fill out the information on the pad, and then pass it to the person next to you. And if the last person would be so kind as to tear that off and leave it loose, the ushers will really appreciate your help on that. In the 16th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, the first eight verses talk about three women who wanted to anoint the body of Jesus. Those three women were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, and Salome. And so they set out uh, for the tomb. They did not know who would be at the tomb or if anybody would be at the tomb to roll back the stone so that they could enter into the tomb of Jesus. But this rather large obstacle didn't stop them. They went anyway. So that made me wonder, have any of you ever been prompted to do something and you knew that there was an obstacle or maybe some small challenges that you would face, but you did it anyway? Well, that's what these three women did. And of course, I think they did it primarily out of their love for Jesus. But you could also say that it was their faith in action that caused them to do that. And that's a good lesson for us to remember. Um, my favorite scripture, I call it my lifetime scripture, is found in Proverbs, the third chapter, verses five and six, where it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. I think it's good to remember that if and when you're ever strongly prompted to do something, and you know there's gonna be an obstacle, that you should try to remember that the Lord does not ever send you to a place where his grace does not help and keep you. Let me repeat that. The Lord does not ever send you to a place where his grace isn't there to help and keep you. Let us prepare our hearts for worship.
Christ is risen. risen Happy Easter. Go and find someone and say, peace be with you. remain standing and join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
please bow with me as we pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, as we gather to offer our tithes and offerings, we are reminded of the words of the Apostle John about the word of life. Just as your word brings light into our lives, may our giving be an act of generosity and a reflection of the abundance of your grace and love. We thank you for the forgiveness and grace offered through your son, Jesus Christ. And as we give, may we also steward these gifts wisely for the betterment of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. joy to be in the house of the Lord, amen. amen, and to celebrate Easter together. Oh, don't you dare to tell me Easter is over. It is not. The challenge is on. Remember, 40 days of Easter, and some are catching up a little bit, and it's good to do that together as we're in his house. Would you pray with me? Lord, we are we're astounded. We're shocked. We try to go back to a normal routine and it's not working. We see Easter lilies everywhere. We see miracles happening everywhere. We watch new life coming out of nowhere where there were obstacles before, where stones are suddenly rolled away, where people see, oh, I didn't know, I didn't see that coming, but it's better than anything I imagined. Lord, we know it is pure grace. It is by your power that we walk on this Easter walk of 40 days. Before you are sending back to be with the Father, don't touch me yet, you said, but, but watch the miracles, the signs of life, of everlasting life and forgiveness of sins. Lord, we want to forgive us where we are trying to go back into our own bubbles. And just think the way it was before is how it's going to be. And then comes summer, and then comes autumn, and then comes Christmas. It's not how it works, oh God. You remind us. You surprise us. And you turn us around. 
It's called the transformation of the world. Lord, give us clear eyes, an open mind, wake us up so that we don't just hear lullabies that put us to sleep, but let me hear the berserks that goes into waking us up as if it were a dream, but it's real. You are here. Lord, we bring prayers to you this morning for this world, for places in the world where it's hard to believe that you said, peace be with you and freedom. We pray for Israel, for Palestine, for Gaza, for Russia, for Ukraine, for Sudan and Yemen, for people who are hungry, who are hungry for your word, for families that are not intact at the moment, for relationships that are fractured, for bodies and minds that are hurting and because of the pain, they feel like they can't see you, oh God. You're right behind them. We pray for the churches, for the universal church of the world, where people are striving to understand the miracle of Easter. We pray for you, UMC, this morning, for the ones, for these young people who say, I will say yes to this church, for Kate and Johannes. We pray for all the youngsters in the world who are eager that someone will address them and ask them and say, do you want to be part of that movement? And I am sure they will say yes. We pray for our preschool. We pray for our shut-ins that we're going to bring the communion to today. We pray for people who just need a good place, a new family that they can be adopted into. Lord, we lift up folks in our flock that said, could you pray for me? I'm praying for Alexandria, for Vanessa. I lift up Louis and Phyllis. Maribel, Rob, Linda and Fred, I pray for Becky, for Edward, for the family and friends of Fred and the family and friends of Mike, family and friends of Charles, for Dennis, for Jim, for Della. I pray for Marie and the McDaniel family and David. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Our scripture this morning is taken from the 20th chapter of John, verses 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. Our Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 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 How's your Easter going along? Are you, are, you, are you experiencing Easter already? How can anybody think you can just get Easter on one Sunday? There's so much happening, so much new life that we need to dive in to understand. So give yourself some grace and catch on. Happy Easter, everybody. There's good stuff happening everywhere. First of all, the wind has stopped. Did you notice? Now that's a miracle. Number two, we're talking about March Madness and women now. Now that's a miracle. Go Iowa. Right. And, and number three, 
Did anybody go in front of their door last night about eight o'clock and watch something around where California is? And you saw Starling, another rocket shooting up there, and it was like a meteorite. Anybody saw it? Oh gosh, what are you doing at eight o'clock on a Saturday evening? It was spectacular, but I'm not, I have no clue about rockets. I'm not going there, Jim. Right? But I do know that someone explained to me, I thought a rocket needs to go up. Watch the pictures. But this rocket went like this. You could see it all the way from California, all the way over to El Paso, and then it kind of disappeared. And someone explained it to me. But you know, my mind, worldview is black forest. <laughs> the earth is a flat thing, right? But he said, the orbit is so close. That's a miracle. It's not very far. And then I remembered, because you need to know I'm a pastor, that every time I would go and I would perform, officiate a wedding, I would tell people when they put their hands into each other's hands and will tie it together with a stola and protect it from all harm, they said, the sky is not the limit, the orbit is so close, the winds won't blow forever, there's miracles happening, may the Lord protect you, and they're holding hands with each other. I thought I needed to share that with you this morning, and maybe we'll get back to that later in our, in our scripture reading. If you want to understand Easter, you need to understand the cross. If you want to understand the cross, you need to understand the Last Supper. If you want to understand the Last Supper, you need to understand that they were in the upper room and that they were celebrating Passover. If you want to understand the upper room, you need to understand that they were celebrating something that had happened in Egypt. If you want to understand what Egypt stands for, then it wasn't a tourist attraction. It stood for the results of sin. In other words, if you want to understand Easter, you need to understand what sin is all about. This is going to be a long sermon here. We're playing catch up, Easter 101, for the ones who missed one or two of these points in there. Are you ready? Yes. So sin is pretty much everything that you do what God would not approve, period. To live a life that God would not approve. If you live in sin, you're living detached from God, you're disregarding the instructions that God gave you, and that's what the people did back then. That's why they ended up in Egypt. Jealousy, disobedience, doing their own thing, and it was a disaster. If you end up in sin, you are in captivity. Slavery of some kind, like the people of Israel back in Egypt. In a dark spot. You're in danger, and you're endangering other people. The people knew that in Israel, that they could not go back to their promised land until something happened. A miracle had to happen to drag them out of the results of sin that they had found themselves in. And then comes Moses, and then comes a lot of plagues, remember? And the one plague is the one where Jesus in the Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, long time ago, decides and said, if you put the blood of the Lamb on your doorposts, plague number one, two, seven, nine, ten, the last one, your firstborns will be saved. The people of Israel will be saved, and God is going to drag you because the Egyptians don't want anything anymore to do with you and take you out of slavery, the dark spot, the danger where you're in. Do you remember? This is what they're celebrating in the upper room on Pesach that they have made the Exodus out of slavery. Now we're talking a little bit later. Jesus is there with his disciples while he was still alive, celebrating exactly that. And he seems to be the only one in the room back then who knows that living in sin, results of sin, is not solved forever. They're still in a dark spot. They're still in slavery of some kind that they can't live and move and have their being in God. 
They're still endangering themselves and others. He's the only one in that room back then who says we need to have communion one more time, not just a festival of back then what happened in Egypt, but to take away the sin that is still around you. And Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the heavenly realm are having their little conversation deciding we're going to sacrifice one more lamb. The firstborn of God the Father. So by the blood of the Lamb, the people of Israel and everybody who believes in him will be freed from sin. What does sin mean again? That we live as if God did not exist, that we live a life that God would not approve. That by the blood of that lamb, crucifixion, everybody who believes in that lamb that frees us from sin will be free. And then comes crucifixion. And then comes three days and then comes Easter. Easter explaining, if you want to have it in a definition, that the death of sin is dead. That God is giving his firstborn, whom he determined to be the lamb to free the people, a new life, a new body. And people will see him everywhere and say, that is incredible. That the power of sin got defeated on the cross. That the tomb is empty and that everybody who believes in that shall have life also. Made it out of the exile, the captivity, the slavery into sin. Out of being in the dark spot, endangering themselves and others. In other words, getting hurt. That's a long introduction. Our scripture reading today takes us right back into what place? The upper room. So the ones who kind of noti were notified that the tomb is empty, that it probably happened exactly what Jesus had said, the boys, the men, the students of Jesus Christ are hanging out together, catching up with each other, hiding together in that same upper room that they met in the first place while they were celebrating that there is liberation from slavery in Egypt. There's a big circle. We're coming full circle. Do you notice it? I mean, if I were them, I would have picked a different spot. If you want to hide somewhere, everybody knew this is where they were before. What are they doing there? Maybe regrouping, trying to sort it all out. Shall I go back to my wife and my children? Shall I get my job back being a fisherman down there in Galilee? Oh, it was embarrassing. I mean, put yourself in the shoes of the disciples. They have a lot to think through and to understand at that moment in the upper room, all locked up. Or maybe they're just tracing back, trying to go one more time. Did you ever do that? To get to the stations where the good things happened. One more time, I want to go on that trip where everything was right. One more time, I want to see that national park. One more time, let's go back to the upper room. Remember when Jesus was sitting there with us and everything was still well. He was talking about that he had to go and to crucifixion and all of it. But the rest was good. Like trying to find, where did I go? Where did I lose my key? I went over here, over here. Maybe I'll find the moment where I felt that God was with me in Jesus Christ. And this is where all the amazing stuff happens. You see it in the scripture from today. Number one, there is Jesus suddenly standing in the midst of them. How did he get in there? I thought he was locked up. In the midst of them, right there with them. Telling them, peace be with you, twice. Because you can't hear it the first time. Peace be with you. Oh, peace be with you. Did you get it? Yes. And what else? Breathing on them, the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute, I thought we have to wait till Pentecost. They're getting a sample of the Holy Spirit, inhaling it right there. And Jesus is showing him the proof. Look, look at the marks. 
It's me. The <laughs> same person, new body, but the same person who got sacrificed because I'm the lamb that saves all the firstborn so that you don't have to be anymore in sin. Do you remember the story? And then there was one more thing he did. What was it? Oh, being sent out. Yeah, we, we ignore that one, right? Because it brings us right back to the mission statement of University United Methodist Church. You didn't see that coming. Well, what was the mission statement of UUMC again? Anybody? Yep. Okay. Russ. Oh, no, I'm not going to. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah. You have it on the front of your bulletin. It's right under the name of this church and our identity. University United Methodist Church means front of the bulletin. Transforming the world as disciples of Jesus Christ. That was the last point he said on the scripture for us today. Sending you out, Maggie. Go, Maggie. And everybody else, go into the world and do what? Make disciples of Jesus Christ. That's our mission of the church. The Easter message of Jesus Christ right there in that locked up upper room where people are catching up the different stations of where Easter came from. And there's a little problem in there because it says something that you and I, I don't know, identify with. Because your job, the way you make disciples is, according to the scripture from today, that you ever you forgive their sins, their sins are, that's what we do. Imagine yourself standing on the golf course or talking with your team and then suddenly someone says, what do you do at UUMC? Oh, well, we, we're in the business, we forgive people their sins. That would fly. Right? Or at the lunch meeting with your friends. What does this church do? Uh, we are the ones who either forgive people their sins or we retain their sins. And you say, no, 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 not me. If someone asked you and said, what does this church stand for? And said, we're nice to people. <laughs> We're friendly. We believe in God. You can come too. It's a good place. It's not exactly what Jesus said there. He says, wherever you forgive their sins, you can translate it in your world, and that would go maybe. Oh, yeah, we hear the word forgiveness. Yeah, 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 yeah. That means everybody be nice to each other. From now on, we just forgive each other. It's not what it says. It's not what it says. Whatever you said at the funeral of my uncle, 25 years, I forgive you. Forgiven and forgiven. That you took my grandmother's jewelry, I'll forgive you. That's not what it says. And then we say, oh yeah, I don't know, it means like we forget about sins. Maybe that would go on the golf course. He said, you know, we just don't talk about sin anymore. That would work, right? Or at the lunch, luncheon with your friends. Forget about sin. I, I am a sinner too. I mean, I have my mistakes and I'm not an angel. You're not an angel. We're all good. That's not what it says. Sorry. It says, whoever you will forgive their sins, their sins are forgiven. That is the job description of everybody who believes in Easter. That's the main point that Jesus needs to bring up, standing there in the middle of these astounded disciples. Does he have any clue who he has in front of them? Because they probably look at him the way you look at me right now. Really now? Who am I? What was the definition of sin again? That people are not anymore in sync with God's commandments. Yeah. 
that they're in slavery of some kind of thing, tied up with things that they can't move, it doesn't move, they're stuck. That it's dangerous for them and others because they're hurting each other and they're just in a dark spot. The job of an Easter person, his disciples first, is that Jesus encounters, encourages, authorizes you and I to go to folks who have no clue about it, not to bring them to church and make them members, but to confront them and share with them what keeps them away from life and that God has a plan for them so that they should live And that we are encouraged, no, that we're ordered by the living Christ. You go out there and you tell people that captivity is not what God has meant for you to be in. That you're not supposed to be in the dark place where you're stuck in. That pain, physical pain, mental pain, social pain is not what God had intended when he made you. That he sacrificed his own son, the lamb, the blood of the lamb on your doorsteps so that you should live. Get out of there. Leave your sins, your separation from God right here and come and follow. It will take some time, but it is possible, even if you don't think you can. That's the job of a Christian. Whoever you will forgive your, their sins, their sins are forgiven. You talk to them about the wonders. You talk to them that the orbit is not that far away. Rockets, phew, you talk to them that the wind will stop even of New Mexico in spring. You talk to them that one day women will be mentioned when we're talking about March Madness. You put their hands into God's hands. That's what Jesus meant, like in a wedding, and said, hold on tight. God loves you. And he wants you to walk with him from now on. Get out of Egypt. Trust that he paid for you and that he loves you and knows you by name. Breathe the Holy Spirit and peace be with you. Peace be with you twice. Oh, don't look at me and say, well, that's not for me. That's for you, preacher. You know much more people than I do, don't you? And you and I, we will answer one day when we meet the Lord. And I said, so did you do what I told you to do? Did you forgive people their sins? Wow. Uh, if you're with Mary Magdalene, I'll stop here in a minute. You would say, well, I don't know what to do. She had the Lord standing behind her when she thought her vertigo and she can't stand straight and she's getting dizzy. He's standing behind her and said, I got you. I know you by name. I want you to go and forgive someone their sins. She did, even Mary Magdalene. Or, or that shy disciple who's sitting all the way in the dark corner of that upper room and hopes that nobody will mention him. Who's scared to death because this is, was his life and now it's over. But Jesus is breathing the Holy Spirit at him. That you go, you forgive someone their sins and you pull them into life because Someone found it important enough to forgive you your sins. Now you do it to someone else. It becomes like a dream, not like a lullaby that puts you to sleep, but it gets your attention. It's like what you did with us. And the rest of us are just going to remind each other. It's like performing, officiating a wedding. Finding someone that we're not forgiving what someone did to me. That we're authorized as Easter people to remove the obstacles that whoever puts between them and God. That's the mission statement of the church. 
And then you'll see miracles happening after miracles. It takes 40 days for sure. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, not Heike, not Dorothy, not Betty, we will see miracles happening. Because it's about liberation and peace, remember? And the last sacrifice that ever needed to happen, happened. Let's spread it and share it with each other. You have someone on your mind, I see it. And if you need help, talk to someone else and say, how, how do I start this? Not pressure, not awkward. But that's how this church started, remember? It, someone found it important enough to bring people back and hold hands with God. And by that, you can move forward one step at a time out of that darkness, out of that damaging spot, because God has plans for you and for that person that is on your mind also. And Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are cheering you on and saying, go, I'll equip you. And it will happen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. You pray with me. Lord, I thought it was good enough just that we say Christ is risen, he's risen indeed, and that would be it. And you say, no, no. You walk through our locked up doors and you say, we're just starting. The mission of the resurrected Christ is to send us out. Do you know who you're talking to, God? And you say, yes, I do. And you give us your peace and you give us your Holy Spirit and you show us the marks on your hands and on your side and you promise us that nobody else needs to be hurt anymore. The people can stop digging in their own wounds and scars that you want them to live and to heal and to move forward and that's our job and we will try to learn, oh God. I correct that we will learn. Instruct us, forgive us, even if there are challenges on the way, the stone is already rolled away, and peace is there in openness. Yes, Lord, Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Thank you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
be seated. This is not the table of UUMC. It's not a Methodist table. Everybody who can celebrate the liturgy with us is welcome to be part of it. If you'd rather want to be served in the pews, please let our ushers know and they would be happy to come and serve you at your place. Gratitude, praise, hearts lifted high, voices full and joyful, these you deserve. For when we were nothing, you made us something. When we had no name and no faith and no future, you called us children. When we lost our way or turned away or locked ourselves up, you did not abandon us. When we came back to you or you stood in our midst, your arms opened wide in welcome and looked you prepare a table for us, offering not just bread, not just wine, but your very self so that we may be filled, forgiven, healed, blessed, and made new again. You are worth all our pain and all our praise. So now, in gratitude, we join our voices to those of the church on earth and in heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Church, on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, come and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks, gave it to them and said, come and drink from it, all of you. For this is the cup of salvation, which is poured out for you and many for the deliverance of sins. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice following you, hearing the word that you send us out, even us, that you empower us, equip us with the Holy Spirit, with peace, with looking at your marks, so that we can forgive people their sins. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. May the communion ushers and worship leader come to the altar, please. is my body which is broken for you and many for the deliverance of sins Barb. father this is the body of Christ broken for you this is the body of Christ broken for you the body of Christ broken for you Jen. When the supper was over, Trudy, Jesus took the cup and said, drink from it. This is the blood of Christ poured out for you and many over. Drink this as often as you can, Mary Lou, in remembrance of me. Barb, the cup of salvation poured out for you 
up the blood of Christ for you. Or this is a cup of salvation poured out for you. Jimmy. Cup of salvation poured out for you. One of our sacred ministries is to send communion out to our loved ones, our shut-ins, part of the team. Would you let them know that we love them and that they're forgiven and that they're in the business of forgiving other people their sins? Go in peace. And our communion ushers Finding their stations. As Miss Trudy is leading you all to the front. Come, church, everything is ready. Taste and feel how much God loves you.
Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Church, the worship is over. The service continues as we go out into a new week, second week of Easter, and the challenge is on that we're following the directions as he walks into our closed, locked-up rooms and authorizes every one of us to make disciples, to forgive them their sins. You go out, you go to Sunday school, the ones who have a ministry picture for our webpage, go and see Rusty Stobel in the foyer that you know where you have to go. And then at noon, we want to see everybody back here, I mean down the hallway for our potluck, to make some new friends. And then you have to watch the basketball, and then you have to do all these kind of things during the week and see signs of God's miracles happening everywhere. Amen? Amen. Receive God's blessing. May the Lord watch over your comings in and goings out from this day on and forevermore in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.